from the Zip Cave in Huntington, West Virginia. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. Welcome to the Geek Zip Podcast. I'm all out of bubblegum. Comic books, superheroes, Marvel, DC, sci-fi, TV, music, wrestling, and so much more. That's no moon. Submit your questions and or comments to geekzippodcast at gmail.com. Where are you? Here. Go! Now. We rescue a world from mysticism and tyranny. And usher in a future brighter than anything we can imagine. Here's Ryan Zip and Chris Chin. MJF has a cool shirt, dude, with a kangaroo with a scarf on it like him, and it says kangaroo kick. Nice. Were you at the place when he did the kangaroo kick? Did you <coughs> see that? That was in the pre-show. Nope. He was going like this. It's actually pretty funny, dude, watching him get into like, p- kangaroo position. What is going on? It is almost as funny as KO doing Enzo's dance. No, that nothing will ever be dude, funnier than that. It's going like that. <laughs> the way is that I mean I, MJF dude, that, sells it but yeah it's it's not it's not as funny as that but it's close. MJF is is you know I he's know he's winning you over I've always liked MJF all right good no no I've I've liked him since Jump Street dude. Right. I, you know I'm glad he's not embroiled in the bullshit going on because mm-hmm. it, it is bullshit man. <laughs> It's funny. I know you, you. You're probably like, no, of course. But it's funny listening to Jim Cornette's take on all of it. I haven't he listened. Just, to he it. just thinks they're all fucking stupid kids, spoiled kids that have. He's like, they just much, need to be beaten. They're too, too entitled millennials. That's what they say. That's what. That's pretty much what he says. He says back in the old days, we'll just beat the shit out of them. That would have been the end of it. That's what we did. We'd have you wrestle a bear. <laughs> that bear, he he know what to do. We'd be like Bear, if you don't, if he don't come back bloodied. Is that his name, Bear? He's a real bear. <laughs> remember when they used to wrestle the bear? Yeah, I remember. But they they told the I forget. the bear didn't want to have to bloody people up, but they're like Bear, if you don't bloody him up, you're we're gonna be back in the forest. <laughs> no honey for you, bud. So the bear, hadn't, he did what he was told. Yeah. He had a family. He had a family to feed. He couldn't fuck around. That's right. Well, I think I heard somebody saying that on one of the Dark Side of the Ring episodes. That he had a family to feed? That he had to bloody somebody up because oh. he had a family to feed. It was his job. The bear? No, just a, per- a bear. Doesn't, oh. A bear doesn't have... Fa- Bears have families. I, I think they have families. Yeah. Remember? I'd be devastated to know they didn't. The Goldilocks and the three bears. Yeah. That's a family. They were family. Damn straight. Shit. They were in the new uh, Puss in Boots movie. Is that right? Yeah, dude. Were they like mean or They were kind of bad, but then they kind of became a family together at the end. Like the bears did, or they became a family with Puss in Boots and everything? Well, they were looking for this wishing well, and and our wishing star, and Goldilocks wanted it so she could wish for her her family, even though the bears had adopted her, you know, and she she didn't realize what she had with the bears. (laughs) <laughs> Jesus Christ so, so she realized she her true family was with the bears dude And it was it was good It was a feel, feel good movie It's the Geek Zip Podcast Ryan Zip is here in the Zip Cave with Christian as normal And we are talking nonsense as usual Talking puss in boots baby <laughs> That's not what I thought you were going to say <laughs> Hope everyone's had a wonderful week. Um, it has been an interesting week, to say the least. It's September now. It is September. The leaves are starting to fall. Christian, you say you've already gotten into that uh, Peacock horror movie content. Yeah, I watched the dumb one. <laughs> which, which one did you watch? I think it was called like April in the Apocalypse. It's about a guy going... That sounds dumb. Well, like, he was trying... Would... It was kind of like one of those Love and Monsters one where there's an apocalypse and the guy... Goes after the girl that's across this country through the apocalypse to try to find her. Uh huh. Just stupid. Yeah, it sounds pretty stupid. Um, <laughs> why would you pick a stupid one when they have all those classics on there? Because I want one I hadn't seen. Uh, gotcha, gotcha. Um, it has been a crazy week in the world of wrestling. If you follow wrestling, then you know what we're talking about, and we're definitely going to get into that discussion this morning or afternoon or evening, depending on when you watch the show. Want to apologize to everybody for the video feed last week. It's all right. 
Oh man, YouTube I was mad. Was just I was fucking mad. Yeah, it just took forever. Well, Up not only that, something. but there, you know, if you noticed, and I kind of edited it to where you almost don't notice, but you notice when we had to like start again. Yeah, and that just threw everything off. So I had to restart again and do it again. And video editing sucks balls anyway. You need to get Sam to do it. I need. I need to fucking. I probably do need to contract it out. I mean, if we're being real, I need to start contracting out shit. I don't have time to do this shit anymore. You know, and you don't help, so that doesn't help. <laughs> no help from me. You wouldn't give me help the other day when I wanted your help carrying stuff in. You got arms, don't you, bro? You wanted me to help you carry your goddamn food in the house. How ridiculous is that? I wanted you to that? help carry. I had things for you that you could help carry. When somebody these asked, things are, when somebody asks you for help, you don't go, uh. You go, yeah, man. What you need? No. That's not what you do, and that's not what most people do, so shut up. It is, too, what I do. I'm a good helper. I help good. I'll remember that next time I need to move something. Yeah. Most people are afraid to ask. I, 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 I am afraid to ask, because I figured you'd either say no or get mad at me. Oh, I will get mad at you. Don't ask for help. Well, so you, I'll you see go. you as weak, too, <laughs> and then I'll attack. <laughs> oh, shit. All we, right. We what have you been watching? What have you been playing? show our vulnerability. No, we can't show weakness for sure. Uh, I watched Naked and Afraid, Last One Standing. That was a good one. It was a new way they'd done Naked and Afraid, dude. There was like 12 people, and the last one won $100,000. The last one meaning what? Like they all quit? They had eliminations where like, oh, if, like you Survivor? if you couldn't build a fire fast enough, if you're the last one to build the, your fire, or you're the last one to set a trap, you're out. Huh. It's interesting. What's that on? HBO Max. Discovery stuff. This is my alarm to wake up to get ready for the show. And it's funny because uh, one guy is like playing the game from the beginning, like he's trying to collect all the tools and everything. Because mm -hmm. on uh, one way that this show is different is like they don't really start off with tools; they have to find tools. But they have a map that shows them where the tools are. Right, right, right. <laughs> but this asshole is like, I'm going to go claim all the tools. <laughs> That's a pretty good strategy, though. Yeah, sure, but I everybody mean, else wants to work together and, like, you know. Fuck that. <laughs> Not when there's cash on the line, baby. Oh, dude, so it's like everybody against this one guy. <laughs> now, that sucks. Is that then you get the hate. And he's you mad. Get caught up in he's it. mad, too, dude. He's like, they're just bullying me because I'm playing the game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not because I'm being an asshole. That's how things happen, <laughs> man. That's how things happen, for sure. Um, I did watch the third episode of Ahsoka. I did not. <laughs> Not are you done? No, I want to yeah. wait for more to come out. Yeah, it's still it's still very early on in its phases, um, but I like what I'm seeing so far. I know it's got a lot. I of, heard it was kind of a short episode. It was shorter part. than the other ones in time. Yeah, but I have the feeling that's because the next one, which is pretty much setting up the appearance of Thrawn. Mm -hmm. And possibly that fucking kid from Rebels, whatever his name is. I can't remember his name. Who, Hera's kid? Jason? No, the fucking Jedi that they're looking for. Oh, because, Ezra. Ezra, yeah. So that, that that was why I think it was shorter. Um, but, you know, that's, you that's a, a total guess. I, I think a big one's coming, right. Um, I know that, like, viewership dropped a lot on this third episode with Disney+. Plus. And I don't necessarily think... See, the problem is, is that, you know, these companies are measuring this shit based on when it drops. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of streaming, is you don't have to be at a place, you know, at a certain time. You can watch it when you want. Well, it's like but, it's like Netflix canceling shows after it's been out like a, a week. It's like, yeah, you're don't not even, even giving chance. people yeah. time. To, all the shit out there to watch at any time. And so, you know, I think that's a big problem with the streaming process is that, you know, these companies don't take into consideration the fact that Ahsoka came out Tuesday, but I probably won't get to watch it till Thursday or Friday if I get to watch it at all. Like yourself, you haven't been able to watch it yet. It's that short-term strategy, short-term over it's long It's dumb term. and it's stupid, and we'll get into that a little bit later, too, because we... Uh, as always, the strike have is still going on. Folks. About that fucking strike, yeah, it's still going on. But um, I have been playing. <laughs> I thought you'd like this. Um, 
they dropped Age of Empires 4 oh, on yeah, yeah. Xbox uh, Game the Game Pass, Pass yeah. and I'm playing the shit. I forgot how fun those fucking games are. You play with a controller? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, it's weird, and, and it was hard to get used to, because everything does something, and combinations of buttons do things, too. Do you have, like, a cursor? There's a cursor, yeah, that's 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 your joysticks, yeah, yeah. right? And then you can select something, trigger, and then How's it work? Do you think it works okay? I think it works great. Now I have it I have it now look, there's a campaign in the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. I course. played that and I do well. I have not played against another person. Yeah. So I don't know like I know that when you were on computer, it was really about how fast you could be Shortcut in moving your troops. And stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, like like and and bring in enforcements and all that shit. So I don't know, but I, I, you know, I like those games more for the building of the cities, sure, yeah, and the fun of it anyway. So I'm, I'm that dork, research and technology. I'm and that stuff. dork in Minecraft that plays in the open world with no fucking <laughs> villains or enemies because hey. I just want to dig and build. Creative mode, dude. <laughs> Peaceful mode. But I forgot how fun that fucking game is. It really is, and it's on Game Pass now. Um, I don't know. Texas Chainsaw Master got old real quick. You know, it was like because it's the same. It's like three boards and same boards, yeah. same characters, same. And outfits. it never scared you. You're just like, no, it didn't scare me. No, you're <laughs> right about that. It did not scare me. Did you um, ever get to be Leatherface? Yeah, I told you that last week. I played as Leatherface and the Hitchhiker. Those are the only parts of the family that I've gotten to play so far. Um, Leatherface I was, I was is watching, fun, I was except w- like you have to like start and stop his chainsaw. <laughs> Like that would happen. He gets it right every time, dude. <laughs> yeah, and then you got to rev it. It's like, rawr, rawr, rawr. it's mm. like, god damn, I'm tired of revving this fucking chainsaw. And then you got to make your own face mask of people. <laughs> no, you don't get to do that, unfortunately. Let's create a character, dude. That's a little too. That's a little too far, even for whatever they are. Rated Gun, R entertainers, whatever the fuck. Well, you've been, you've been, what, what have you been playing? Vampire Survivors. <laughs> what the fuck is that? It's like a two dollar, three dollar game that's like a okay roguelike bullet hell. It's like you get little weapons and yeah. en- enemies are trying to attack you from all sides, and you just try to survive as long as you can. Gotcha, gotcha. I I, I downloaded a game from Game Pass shortly before I noticed that Age of Empires was on there. Um, it was called Firewatch. Yeah. Have you heard of this? I, it's yeah. I, I don't never get played those it, games. I mean, I, I, I guess there's these games. There's supposed it like a narrative. There's a story. Yeah, to it. it's like it's supposed to be like like submersive and and like immersive. Sub. Sorry, immer. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's Subnautica, dude. That's definitely submersive in the water. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I. I is that the game that's getting ready to come out? No, that's the one that's been out. There's another one that's in ice, but it's like well, that's where you go deep, deep underwater. Like like when you're driving the shit that you have in the abyss. And yeah, shit? and there's like big monsters. Okay. It's okay. scary. Is that on is that on what's that on? It's on everything, I think. Yeah? Okay, I've checked that out. That sounds dude. interesting. I love sea games because there's not enough of them. Dude, it makes it feel, I mean, you freak out sometimes swimming through these little caves and running out of air and trying to I'll get, bet. Get back to the surface. You know, that reminds me of that shark game that came out a few years ago. It was called Man Eater. You remember that one? Yeah. I bought that, that one. That was a fun one. It was fun, except that you had to start as a fucking guppy. And wah, then wah, wah. DLC yourself into like a badass shark yeah, that fucking there. kills people. You no, you there. don't get there. You pay there. No, you don't. There's a, yeah, there was a DLC that gave you like electric powers or something. Yeah, fuck it. If you want to be a megalodon, you got to buy it. <laughs> you want to be a fucking great white, you got to buy it. There's worse shark games out there, trust me. I'm sure there are. You're absolutely right. <coughs> Speaking of sharks and sudden attacks. Mm. <laughs> Let's get into the news. Blood um, in the water, dude. <laughs> yeah, blood in the water. First of all, no RIPs this week, thank God. Well, no, yep. God damn it. It happened yesterday, didn't it? I forgot or about that This evening that one. or something. Something recent. like that. Um, Jimmy Buffett. James Jimmy Buffett, Buffett passed away. Uh, I do not have any information pulled up because, like I said, this happened. We're recording on Saturday the 2nd, and this happened on the 1st. So I didn't have a chance to prep this uh, with a story, but we used to play some of his songs on. Rock I love Band, Jimmy dude. Buffett. Oh yeah, I'm I'm a big Jimmy Buffett fan. If you've ever been to a Margaritaville, we had Cheeseburger in Paradise on Rock Band. 
That's a good song. I mean, he had great songs. He had shitty songs, too, but he had good songs. He knew what he was doing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I agree. He knew uh, his audience. Yeah, no, he did. And, and, you know, he will be sorely missed. All our best to his family fans and stuff will dedicate this episode to him because we forgot to mention him. But, again, Fins. it's kind of late-breaking news. That's, I, I, that's his nickname, dude, Fins. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. Maybe. <laughs> It might be the name of a song. Jimmy Finn's Buffett. I'll never forget going to Las Vegas to the Margaritaville. And you walk in there and there's a big fucking blender. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's the size of Is a it fucking... actual functioning? Yes! It's the size of like an F-150 truck. Cool. And they load it every up. half hour... And you get a jump inside like this it? Like the small Well, chicks did get in it. There you go. So I think it's just for show, but... It's like a volcano was on top of the bar, and it would erupt, and it would run down margarita into the blender, and it would blend every half hour. Dang. It was fascinating. I might have to check out a clip <laughs> of that was, or something. Dude. It was fascinating. Look it up. I mean, it's really I cool. I plan on it. Um, all right. Let's get into uh, what's going on over at AEW with CM Punk at All In and Jack Perry. For those that don't know, and, I, a and I mean- huge show, the biggest show in wrestling so well, far at yes. All In at Wimbledon. Um, that that we took place. We did together. watch some of it. Some I, well, of I didn't it. watch it all because I watched what I wanted to and I left. Um, you still hung out. I hung out for a while. It was fun. Your brothers were there. I didn't stay up for some of the mat. Well, I guess it was during the day, so it's not like I went Dude, to sleep. Another, I, I mean, another thing, it was like that's an, it was fuck. I mean, by the by the time they they ended with the pre show, what is that? A six seven hour show? It seemed to, like it went on. God damn! I mean, I don't have time for that shit, man. I can't think of many adults who do. Um, but anyway, so you know they had the big show in Wembley, and you know the matches that took place. Well, what you may or may not know, assuming you listen to this show, you probably do know. There was another incident involving almost, Mr. CM Punk almost a backstage. Year, almost at, a year to the day. Yeah, at All Out. An anniversary of his last, or all in. At last attack at Brawl Out. Um, all at the Brawl Out at All Out. The brawl out at all is that what it's called? I think so. With the elites and Kenny. Yeah, the brawl out at all out at after the after the medium scrum. scrum yeah. We all remember this happening. Um, and CM Punk's done it again, baby. I think he topped himself. Uh, he, uh, you, you know, the thing about these situations is that you, uh, you, there are a lot of factors that are involved. Number one is kayfabe, right? You don't you and don't want to. Well, yeah, I mean, that's another factor, dude, because they um, keep disrespecting the punk. Investigation, Tony Khan's favorite word. What that means is go find out what the fuck happened. That's what that means. Uh, so I think he's doing that. But okay, let me let me tell them what happened here, okay. so they got uh, frame reference. So apparently, news came out the night of. Yes, I mean it, it was happening. We we didn't know at that time, or we we started hearing something happened, but we didn't really know. Yeah. Who all was involved and what the situation was. So apparently, Jack Perry, who is Jungle Boy, was supposed to have a match with CM Punk in which they were supposed to do a spot on a car and Perry wanted to use a real car with real glass. I'm not sure if they were supposed to do that together. Or if CM Punk was just saying, hey, don't... Okay, you. maybe you're right, because they weren't set to match up at um, All In, so that yeah, makes I sense. I think they had an argument about using glass or right, not. Right, right. And, and Perry's one of these fucking crazy fuckers, young fuck who doesn't give a shit about what he does to his body. And Punk was like, no, we're not going to do that. That's stupid. They're going to get somebody hurt or whatever. I mean, I sure. assume that's the way the conversation went. He's like, I saw Goldberg punch a window. I mean, I heard, and, and I heard other people chimed in, too. That it wasn't just Punk who didn't want to do it. I heard some of the some of the actual bookers didn't want to do it. So then at Jack Perry's match, he had a car and he went and explicitly said to the camera, "Like, hey, it's real glass." After suplexing his opponent onto the glass, it didn't shatter. Thank God, it kind of folded like windshields do when they get broken. But yeah, Christian, just like he said, he looked in the camera and pretty much pissed in CM Punk's mouth. Or at least that's how Punk took it. <laughs> so, um, so Punk confronts Punk comes Perry out. As soon well, as he gets we back there. Punk goes out and has his match with Samoa Joe. Solid match, not bad. 
And then when Punk comes back through the curtain, here's where the reports go different directions. See, I thought it happened before their match, before CM Punk's match. I mean, tell them. I don't. <laughs> I'm still trying to follow it all. I so think it, I, think I don't. Ha- I, I think it happened after Perry's match when Perry was coming back. Okay, so that's when the Crimea River happened, and there have been very reports about the um, the latest recount via the Wrestling Observer newsletter, and which is quoted as being a neutral source in the story. Yeah, I think they said the first people were said stuff was Punk's camp and then Perry's camp, and now right. we have a neutral source. According to the neutral source, Punk approached Perry backstage at Wembley Stadium and went, quote, nose-to-nose with him aggressively, unquote. Perry claimed his on-air co- comment was an attempt to get heat on his heel persona that he just recently flipped, right? Everybody knows he was Jungle Boy, now he's Jack Perry. I'm trying to get heat from CM Punk. <laughs> well, I... <laughs> That's what I think. But That's what it sounds like. I don't Punk know. allegedly reacted by shoving Perry before the former punched and choked the now former FTW champion in front of company president Tony Khan. Once things were broken up, and we do know that Samoa Joe was involved in, the, in trying to break it up, I think uh, Miro was mentioned at some point, correct? I think Miro was like messing with him or something. Was that after the that fact like or whatever? Or like that like one, a, that one story was saying it was like a joke, like a job, or, or, miscommunication or, or, maybe. Or, or okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so anyway, Punk allegedly lunged, and that's in quotation marks, at Khan before telling the AEW boss he would be quitting the company. That's because Khan was like, "Let him go," and then slapped him. I don't think that's what happened. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll have to see what the investigation turns up. Samoa Joe is actually quoted as being the hero of the situation sure. because he calmed everybody down and explained guy. the importance of... Well, it's an important fucking show. Yeah. And I don't really give a shit about Punk or Perry in this situation. Sure. Because you're selfish pricks, both of you, if you're doing this shit during this show. It yeah. just makes no sense. And, and I mean, you know... Put the you pay, know me, put I'm the usually aside. right. I'm got, usually on punk side. Got stuff to do, but I mean, this was stupid. Why would you do this at a show, especially this, a week out from? And you're going the to be in Chicago, pay-per-view. so that just shows that he doesn't give a shit about his fans. And he also said something. Then they say he's reported saying he, <laughs> he was going wanted to quit, threatened to quit. I mean, I'm sure he's been wanting to quit because of what's been going on. I mean, they, that's what you said. You could said you could tell by the go to sleeps. Right, that's what I'm saying, and I mean, they gave him his own fucking show, and you know, that didn't fucking please him, so I mean, the more I back up Punk, the more he fucks me by going and doing this crazy shit after the fact. Um, Now, I will tell you that up until a day or two ago... You just got banned from Punk's show, by the way. Probably, That's a meme, you're banned from Collision. Yeah, I'm on the list. (laughs) You've been banned from Collision. I'm on the list. Punk Um, gets mad if Zip's there. Yeah, I'm on the list, I can't come in the building. Because punk's a little touchy, dude. Okay, it's just it's something. Um, so that's what we know currently about the situation. And again, you know, we have no footage. We have these are all witness reports. And as Christian said, it was both camps getting their reports back the and forth. The dirt sheets, baby. And then this uh, neutral source on the Wrestling Observer apparently says that it was punk being a prick, and you know Perry had every right to you know, speak up and say what he wanted to say. But, I mean, again, I think this all goes back to the overall issues with AEW and just the out of control. I really feel WCW here in its fucking final days. You know, like like everybody's got their own fucking agenda. Everybody's doing their own thing for their own purposes. Um, But they put on a good show. Yeah. At Wembley. And now it's overshadowed by this. So that's, that's the sad part of it. Um, this news continued with a, another um, thing that I referenced earlier about CM Punk and Mirror Miro. Mirror. Mirror. Mirror on the wall. Miro, Miro. Miro on the wall. And they were actually joking about fighting each other at All In, I guess because, you know, I, you know in CM Punk's mind, it's probably ridiculous because he's a very old school wrestler and that's how things were settled. Old school is back in the back. Without anybody around, well, 
depending on your beef, I guess. If, if it was a big enough beef, they didn't give a shit who was around. Um, so, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know. What, I mean, again, the more things that happen, it just always seems like CM Punk's in the middle, and eventually you have to say, is he the common fucking denominator? In is all, he in all these fucking trouble? dramas. Well, I mean, dude... Again, I go back to the point, this particular show, of all shows to show your ass, and I'm talking to Jack Perry and Punk, right? It's because, I mean, you know, obviously there wouldn't have been an altercation and Perry just walked away, but the fact that you put your fucking boss through this shit and overshadow a legendary house like that, 81,035, I think was the... Official ticket count, something like that. Tony got to get his house in order. How do you do that? I mean, do you bring somebody in? Do you, do you fucking do it yourself? I mean, Crack what, the whip, dude. I'm, well, you, that's what I'm saying. You're going to have to make an example out of somebody. Who do you do that with? Punk? I don't know. Then you fucking lose your money, Perry. Then you lose your respect. So it's like, you know, I feel bad for the guy. I really do. You know, he's in a fucking tight spot. And Punk and Perry aren't helping it. Uh, but, yeah, Miro and Punk were just fucking around joking, so that's not a big deal. Before Punk was suspended, though, come to find out, he was supposed to be in the main event of All Out with Ricky Starks against the real, uh, with the real AEW world title on the line. There was some video with Ricky Starks where uh, he had Pyro, dude, that went on for like five minutes. God. He's like in the ring posing and everything, and the pyro is still going on. Oh, my God. That's pretty funny. Five minutes. That's it's a lot of fucking funny, fuel. Dude. Yeah. I think somebody's <laughs> saying, like, how do you bring all this stuff on the airplane? Yeah, no shit. It's like, well, they go look, tap into an underground fucking gas well. There's with a the firework fire? store next door, dude. <laughs> buy some bottle rockets. You know, I haven't really watched Ricky Starks that much. I don't know much about him. So, you know, I, I don't know if that would have been good or not, but everybody's saying it would have been good. Yeah, it would have been. I mean, it would, I mean, it would have been good to see Punk fine, in Chicago. It would have been fine wrestling. I'm not sure how much story would have been there. Right, right, right. But, yeah, and, and, well, and that's he, he, another piece I have. good at wrestling. Now, you got, because of all this shit, CM Punk can't get himself involved in, in any kind line. of fucking extended storyline because you don't know whether the fucker's going to be there each week or not. Yeah. So, again, a lot of questions were raised by people like myself who tend to err on the side of Punk's views and thinking that he is the adult in the room. Now it's looking like he might be a pouty fucking child, and I was wrong. But we'll have to wait and see what happens. Um, yeah, this is <laughs> he did respond CM Punk to his care. AEW <laughs> suspension. By, that's pretty much what he said. Um, he said for those care. that don't know, there is an amazing organization out there called the Cauliflower Alley Club. All right, once again, we have our weekly crash on the video, so we're back now. It can I was listening so on much, the podcast. Dude. I did take it, take out the blank part, so hopefully Good. they're happy. You left it in the video, though? No. No, I didn't. Um, just means another fun weekend for me. Um, da, na, 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 na. so anyway, as I was saying before we went dark, uh, the cauliflower alley club is a uh, organization that helps old wrestlers after they can no longer go in the ring and wrestle kind of survive. It's kind of like a, um, union where, you know, these guys can, uh, become, you know, um, put out to pasture. Well, <laughs> With respect. Support. Yeah, with support. They're not just dying of diabetes and lots, somewhere. And lots of, lots of uh, wrestlers, managers, promoters, uh, lots of people are members and donate to this club. I wonder and if that hoarder Cobra was, dude. <laughs> he might be. I don't know. If he would, I would have hoped that some of the wrestlers would have come help him clean his house. <laughs> Rob Noxious. Well, there was Rob Noxious. We got, is we is that supposed him. to be like a play on obnoxious? Yes. <laughs> That's right, it's a little because too, you add an R onto the front of it. It's a little too on the nose for me. That's why it's funny. I don't know. That's why Cush lost it. <laughs> Here's what. So anyway, uh, Punk received an award at the Cauliflower Alley Club and um, made a speech regarding kind of the events that have taken place within um, AEW over the past few weeks. Here's what he said. When people tell me that they don't like me or that the internet is mad at me, I just chuckle because Roddy Piper liked me. 
Dusty Rhodes liked me and Harley Race liked me. And that means more to me than anything else in the world because these legends put their stamp on me before anyone else did. It gave me the confidence and it gave me the ability to succeed. Now. What do all three of those people have in common? They love their fans. They're all dead. Well, they're dead, yes. So they can't tell Punk how stupid he's being. But (laughs) here's the thing, though. He doesn't mention his fans. He doesn't care about them. He's got the respect of these people. I mean, I don't know if the CM Punk of today would have the respect of these people. Because, again, you know, you're shitting on the fans, especially with this all out, all in Chicago. All in. I don't give a fuck what all in at Chicago. I think it's all out at Chicago. Whatever. I don't give a fuck. (laughs) Stupid. I think it was all in Wembley. Bunch of kids. All right, let's get into some real news. So there was a word going around town that Kathleen Kennedy, the president of Lucasfilm, was uh, fired following the poor viewing numbers for the first three fucking week, two weeks of Ahsoka on Disney+. Plus. That has been squashed as she has appeared uh, on a recent interview talking about the uh, decline and releasing their own numbers saying that they were significantly better than what people would have you believe. Mm-hmm. So um, she said, Ahsoka has become a fan favorite with people of all ages, and it's wonderful to see her continue to resonate with viewers in her very own headlining series. I want to recognize the fantastic work done by our creative team led by Dave Filoni and John Favreau, the incredible cast led by Rosario Dawson, and our talented crew, blah, 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 blah. I think it's funny that somebody was like, oh, Ahsoka's not doing good. She's fired. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, th- and that's sad the kind of world we live in today, too. Is It's like, you know, she doesn't have a chance because she fucked up. That means she's fired. Oh, she's got a lot of hate from the Star Wars community, from most of us that are like, the new ones weren't that good. Yeah, well. So, uh, Ahsoka also is uh, starting to annoy fans of with the New Republic because of how stupid they are. Oh, you mean how they're like, we don't have weapons. Yeah, they don't we, listen. We don't know. We Those people are all bad. But. Again, you really have to watch episode three to appreciate this one. Oh, okay. Because in this one, there's a lot of um, Mary Elizabeth Winston's character. What's her, what's her name? Hera? Hera? Hera and... Uh, uh, Ahsoka trying to convince the leaders of the New Republic. Mon Mothma. Is she there? She was, she there, was right? there. Yeah, she was there. Um, that, you know, there is There's a threat. A threat growing. And especially when you've got Thrawn involved, um, you know, that's something that really matters. Hey, Ali Z. Um, so again, I think that's why, and I also think that's why this episode might not be as good. There's not really, I mean, there's some lightsaber training that her and that other chick do, but I mean, there's not really a whole lot of action. Plus there's a scene where she's fucking jumping around in outer space. It needs more Grogu sounds like, dude. I mean, it needs more something. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't know what it needs, but it needs more something. That's for damn sure. Uh, but I'm still enjoying it and I'll keep watching it. Ooh. One thing I'll definitely watch is Henry Cavill's Highlander reboot, directed by Chad Stahelski, and it looks like it's going to be more of a prequel film, Christian, to the Highlander film leading up to The Gathering. I don't know. Mu- I don't know much about Highlander. So The Gathering is kind of what they're all waiting for. You don't really know what it is. It's it sounds to- like he's some immortal guy that people just keep up trying to kill him so they can become the immortal guy. So there are. Immortals. Let's call them Highlanders. I thought there's just one, though. No, there's not. There can only be one. The Immortals fight each other until two are left, and then one is left, and that will be the time of this gathering. You don't know what it is or what, you know... It okay. possesses. I'm, I'm just telling you the fucking story. Sure. So these Highlanders fight each other through the centuries, killing each other. You have to chop off their heads. And they live forever through the centuries. They can't be killed or hurt. They can't have children. So that prevents them from passing on any curse. And again, it's just, it's just a really crazy, cool story. Can, that, they, ha- can they have sex? They can have sex, okay. yeah. They can't. I gotcha. Pass seed, you know. 
<laughs> they can adopt. Yeah, yeah, they, they can certainly adopt, but they, but they usually don't because they, they don't want to have to say goodbye. Yeah, they? exactly. It's uh, same thing with humans and vampires. It's like the Queen song. What Queen song? Vampire uh, lover? The, no, the Highlander. Oh, the Queen song. Want to live forever. I don't know that one either. Hope must die. I remember we were the Highlanders in high school. We were the high. That was our mascot. Yeah, you, you were the Highlander because I didn't want to wear the shit. Well, there could be only one. That's true. Um, Stahelski actually addressed some of the elements of the show and what they're going to be shooting for. Um, they're going to be taking some aspects, maybe elements that you saw in the um, Adrian Paul TV series. Mm -hmm. And mixing that with some of the stuff they did in some of the films to make it a prequel, you see there a setup to the gathering so they can grow the property, which I think is a good idea. We might finally see the gathering, huh? I mean, you know, in the films, I'll tell you that what they figure out is the gathering is all knowledge of all things throughout time. Hmm. Sounds like Crystal Skull or something. Very similar, yes, but but this is more based in magic rather than space aliens. Doctor Strange magic. Kind of. Five Nights at Freddy's has a new trailer, Christian. Did you watch it? I might have. I, I don't so. think I did. Um, I think it had a hand coming out of one of the robots. My son, my son is a huge Five Nights at Freddy's fan and really wants me to watch this trailer. I probably will after the show, um, but... It's coming on Peacock, It's right? going to be on Peacock when it drops on theaters, which is awesome. And then that's going to be October 27th, just in time for Halloween. I nice. think that's the Friday yeah. before Halloween, right? Um, so that's pretty cool. You can check out the trailer on our Facebook page now. Big news here, Christian. We got a rumor that Marvel Studios has reportedly submitted an offer to Josh Hartnett to portray Dr. Doom. Is that what role we were talking about for him and Edgerton? What role was that? I can't remember. Oh, God. Remember, no. I said I was on Team Hartnett. Was it Batman? I don't know. I don't remember what it was. I can't, I can't remember, but, it, but whatever it was, I was not agreeing with you, and I thought Joe Edgerton should have been it. Yeah. I can't. We'll have to go back and check the <laughs> fucking tape. Um, this I can see. This, this makes more sense for him. I uh -huh. can totally buy that. Um, and the wonderful job that he did in Oppenheimer. I was going to say, is that um, a picture from Oppenheimer? That's from Oppenheimer, yeah. It looks yeah. like Oppenheimer. Yeah, and as you can see, he hasn't fucking aged at all. So, um, yeah, no, I, I'm totally down for this. Josh Hartman, I think he'd be a great choice. Again, that's more along his take on stuff, like a calm kind of... I think he has the potential to be villainous. Yeah, remember, or tricky, like in Lucky Number Slevin. Right, exactly. Or, or uh, Sin City, where he kind of plays that really... You know, anyway, you know what I'm saying. So I'm, I'm all down for this, and we'll keep you updated on what happens. Again, this was some kind of internet insider that reported this, but we'll see. I'm sure headlines start popping up if that is, in fact, the case. X-Men 97 star Lenore Zahn, she's the voice of Rogue, Christian. Southern Belle. She teases the show coming up as a wild ride. I think it got delayed until next year, though. It did. I'm, I'm very sad about this. Um, so, you know, again, this just goes with more of what Cal was saying at the Comic-Con about the upcoming reincarnation of the show and, you know, what we could expect to see. Um, it's going to be good, is what you're saying? Yes, I think it's going to be very good. Uh, very, very good. It's fantastic to get this opportunity to re-inhibit inhabit the character of Rogue, who is my favorite character I've played to date. I'm grateful to the fans for their loyalty and support for our original series and for my performance, which has made this possible. As usual, Rogue will go through a lot in X-Men 97 like me. She's a passionate woman who can't help wearing her heart on her sleeve, so buckle up for a wild ride. Because she was always still in everybody's life force, remember? I wonder how old she is. This woman? Lenore. <laughs> that was her name, wasn't it? Yes. It's just funny. When you, she looks old. Yeah, well, I figured she'd be pretty old. So, um, But she can still do that smoky voice rogue, huh? She's got those rogue earrings. I God like damn. Those. Look like big pretzels. <laughs> 
pretzel earrings. All right, uh, Ironheart, the series, gets a disappointing update. Well, if you it give was, a shit. It was the whole TV line um, delayed, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, for some reason, they made a big deal about um, Ironheart being delayed until next year. Earnhardt. <laughs> Dale exactly. Earnhardt. 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 Um, again, I just don't care. I want to... But it's so hard. Hi, Ali Z. The MCU is so stretched. Oh God, it's so hard, you know. And and at least we got Loki two still coming. Yeah. So that's good. But you know, I just don't know if I'm ready for Iron Heart. You know, I don't know. Maybe I'm being harsh. But um, anyway, so Iron Heart delayed to 2024. If you care. Uh, Marvel Studios is currently planning on releasing Doctor Strange 3 on May 2nd. Delayed. 2025, <laughs> right? Uh, that'll be delayed. So that'll be delayed for sure. Uh, I, I think they're trying to get Sam Raimi That'll be back. delayed. Yeah, they're trying to you get Raimi back cry. in the saddle for the director's spot. Um, but again, we'll have to see what happens with that. Roman Reigns has officially passed three years as the Universal WWE Champion, Christian. Roman Reigns bloodline. And bam, bam. so what do you think they're going to do with him at this point? Cody Rhodes is going to finish you the think story, they're gonna? Dude. You think they're going to have Maybe. him drop it before breaking sand? Oh, I don't know. Uh, what's his name's record? Seems like they like breaking records these days. Bruno San Martino's record is that? How who much has longer it? would it be? Man, if, I feel like he had it for like five or six yeah, fucking I years. Know, that's what I mean, it's like. Um, I mean, at this point, you could have that discussion. I think. Because that's why they're introducing all these new titles. I think that's what they're trying to do is buy time, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but yeah, I feel like after year four or year five, you know, it'd be like, who cares? Well, I mean, didn't they have like the tag team titles that 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 one set a record, and now they're Gunther's probably going to set a record. There's so you think they're like trying to break the records with new guys? It seems like it. Yeah. Maybe I don't know, but but to break that fucking record of the of the WWF champion, that that'd be a long fucking time as a champ. Hey, somebody's got to break the Undertaker streak too. Fuck idiots. Uh, the one thousandth episode of Impact is coming, or already has happened. One or the I think it's coming. Yeah, it's like September 9th. What are knockout champions? Um, knockouts are what Impact calls their women's division. Oh, okay. So two former Impact Knockout champions are coming out of retirement, and it says it in the story, so I'll just tell you, Gail Kim and Awesome Kong. Awesome. Are going to come <laughs> are going to come out of retirement for the 1,000th episode, which does, in fact, take place on September 9th. Oh, I got a little bit. A week. Awesome Kong has not been in the ring in three years, and Gail Kim... His last match was a pay-per-view match against Tessa Blanchard at 2019's Rebellion. I heard nobody likes her. Like in the back? That Blanchard girl? Yeah, I heard that too. Here's a great one. Uh, <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> uh, it's not great for Xavier. Uh, Xavier Woods, unfortunately, suffered a cervical strain after Drew McIntyre threw a chair, much like an infant, Right at his face, and for whatever reason, and I know you've seen the video, Christian, it looks like he just took it right on the top of his head. Did he threw it like uh, Kevin Nash threw Rey Mysterio. He lawn darted that chair right <laughs> at him. I mean, if you look at this picture we're seeing on our live feed, it looks like Xavier's trying to get his hands up, but that may be because he was going for whoever that is on the bottom. I don't know who he fucking wrestled. Um, There's some heavy ass chairs too. Well, and he'd already thrown a chair. He threw one chair before this picture into the ring to the other side of the fucking ring. Almost cleared the ring. I saw it. It was spinning too in the <laughs> air, dude. It was like a fucking perfect spiral, like he threw a football. <laughs> what was he pissed off about? 
He's turning heel. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> is that what it is? Uh, I think so. Anyway, uh, it sucks for Xavier Woods, but shit happens. He's going to be like, I'm sorry, Xavier, but yeah. I'm not sorry. You, yeah. You got in my chair away. But he watched the clip. It's pretty funny. I mean, and those aren't fucking gimmick chairs, Christian. Those I are know, like dude. the Office Depot chairs that it's you like, go and buy. It's like ECW when they threw all those folding chairs <laughs> oh, in the ring. No, it isn't. Nothing will ever beat that. All right, let's get on to our strike news here. Um, the strike continues in Hollywood. The SAG-AFTRA and the Writers Guild are engaged in supposed talks with these companies. Negotiations. Um, we know they're not going well. There's really not any... Um, Breakthrough. Yeah, there's not been any kind of progress toward perhaps ending the strike. Um but now they've got some new support in the form of Supernatural stars Jensen Ackles and show creator Eric Kripke. Mm-hmm. Um, They're having a reunion. They are on going the to have line. a reunion on the picket line to support the SAG AFTRA and the and the WGA. And everybody's invited from all fifteen. Seasons. Are you going to go? I wasn't in it. Well, I know, but you are an actor. That's true. And so you could easily go and protest. I got to go apply for my SAG card, dude. Well, you'll probably get it. I don't want to have to go all the way to California, though. Why? It's a far. Yeah, I mean, it might be over within a month, so you won't be there that long. I'll just do it from home. <laughs> have 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 Jensen hold a fucking laptop while you're talking. <laughs> I'm going to give a speech, dude. Here's why we need better pay. That's right. Did you get paid for Marshall movie? Yeah, of course I okay. did. Uh, I anyway. Think I, I think I got paid more than I did at the theater at the time. Wow. If you are in the Hollywood, California area, um, head down there. You might see a little uh, Supernatural reunion. No word on whether Pedalecki would be involved in the reunion. But um, I assume that if his other boys were, he'd be there, I would hope. He's probably on the studio side, dude. He's turned heel. <laughs> the Venice Film Festival. <laughs> Everything's wrestling terms now. The Venice Film Festival he took went place. Corporate, did he join the corporation? <sighs> corporate ministry. Um, during the Venice Film Festival, Adam Driver called out Netflix and Amazon for not meeting the SAG after demands before the Venice Film Festival. He's got some balls on him, dude. Biting the hand that feeds. Well, him when like you're talented, that. you can do that. I guess so. Must be nice. When they're fucking clawing after you for every goddamn role in Hollywood, you can probably say that shit, but not many people can. So, like Stephen Amell, (laughs) who got in big trouble for even suggesting going against the union and the uh, strike. So, again, I got to say, you know, I agree with him a little bit, but you're right. It's real easy for him to come out and say that at Venice. Um, rather than some fucking C or D list actor or actress or some fucking set designer or some production crew member or whatever, you know. So, uh, but it's nice that at least he shows his support. Yeah, he's sticking his neck out, and you know that's that's saying something, of course. One thing about the strike is uh, Francis Ford Coppola is working on a new passion project of him called Megalopolis. What the heck is that? Don't know. Um, Megalopolis. And despite the ongoing strikes, the SAG has granted Francis Ford's long jesting product project. God, I can't even talk today. Um, His passion project. As an interim agreement during the strike. So he will be able to make his film. Because he's like, I'm dying. We got to do this. Well, I'm just, I was judging. He's arguably, well, you know, he's arguably film's probably greatest director at this time. Sure. Um, if you I, like you know, that sort of thing. Spielberg and shit, I mean, but what I'm saying is is that, you know, again, you're right, and, and it's fucked up, but you're right. These guys don't have much more time to get this shit done. That's so, And this has gone on for, what, three, four months now? Um, so, you know, I'm glad that Francis gets to make his passion project. He's made so much great shit. That, you know, he deserves to get what he wants, you know, before he wraps up his career. <laughs> Is that Bob Eager right there? Iger? Yes. So apparently, Bob Iger of Disney and David Zosloff of WB are stunned that they are being vilified during the strike. 
comes with the territory and comes with your fucking paycheck, brother. David, I hate to tell you this, but you've been vilified for a long ass time, <laughs> yeah. even before the strike, dude. Well, and Bob Iger wasn't anybody's fucking favorite either, if we're being honest. If we're being he honest. fucked up a lot of franchises and properties. Um, He's pointing right at us, though. Dude. Again, y- yeah, you're you're vilified because you're the face of the problem. But you get paid a lot of fucking money for that, and you to get be that and face. yeah, yeah. So, so go you know, cry into your vault. yeah, yeah. Go cry into your fucking you know coin goddamn tower like Scrooge McDuck, diving board right into it, and, and oh. cry me a fucking river when you break your neck because that's a cartoon and you can't really dive into money like that. That's true. I'm gonna let Allie Z out of the cave. She wants out. Go ahead, keep talking. Out of the cage. Cave. The cage. Oh, she's not in a cage. She's free range. Oh, now she wants to sit down. She's getting in your chair. Oh. Ah. Dog, dogs. That we've been overrun by dogs here. Oh, she's been acting kind of funny. Uh oh. She's probably gonna go poop in your room. I hope she's not sick. Uh, all right. So yeah, Bob Iger, David Zosloff, cross fucking river. Go make some more millions, and you'll be fine. Careful, dude. You're gonna get CM Punk mad at you saying "cry me river." <laughs> Good point. All right. He don't um, take too kindly to them words. That's those true. Fighting words, Jack Perry. In true Zack Snyder fashion, uh, he has revealed that his Rebel Moon films will indeed have R rated R rated director's cuts because he knows. You know. I like how it almost sounds like it's multiple ones, dude. There's going to be an R-rated one. There's going to be an X-rated one. Should. He can't help himself. He's he Zack Snyder. He's got to be violent, which is fine. You know, whatever. Did you see these tumblers they're going to start selling at Starbucks, Christian? They look like slime? Yeah. <laughs> I like how it says they're not official Ghostbuster cups, but we act like they are. They're really not? I thought they were. No, they have nothing. To, they're not officially licensed by Ghostbusters. See, it is. It not. is not. A, <laughs> oh man, that is unfortunate. Um, fuck Starbucks. Look at that, thirty bucks for that goddamn thing. Yeah, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, ooh, that'd be fun to get. Nope. Uh, it's it it's a it's a tumbler that looks like there's slime coming. Dude, that's what all that shit costs at the fucking Starbucks stores. That's crazy. You get that shit secondhand somewhere. Uh, okay, Bitch Tista had a new trailer for Mortal Kombat 1 come out. It's in our blood. Dude, I thought it was a good ad. His eyes fucking light up and blah, blah, blah. What if he's in the game, dude? Then you can actually kill him and you'd love it. He'd bitch about it. I know, but you could kill him. I know, but after I killed him, he would get up and bitch about it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that'd be like his fatality. Bitched. You know, yeah, you've been Bitch-tality. you've been bitched, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, that's exactly no friendship what I think. or anything, dude. Just bitched. No, and he'd just like stand there with his arms crossed. Yeah, he was complaining in the trailer too, dude. He's like, "Mortal Kombat, this is a video game. Why am I even here?" Boom. No, he uh, it doesn't surprise it. me. He didn't it wouldn't that. surprise me if he did. He probably would. He thought about it. Um, I thought he did good, dude. He's like, "Mortal Kombat." Oh, he actually does uh, that I in his so. voice. Yeah. Well, because you remember in back in the day, the kids would do it, but it would be in the guy's voice. Yeah, the that's, well, that's what I was guy. saying. It was kind of like a throwback to that old nostalgia ad. But why is Bitch Tista in it? Because not everybody hates him like you do. He bitches. <laughs> he's got a lot to offer. Bitching. That's yeah. all he's got to offer. Yeah, but I mean, some people like it. God, you like it. I do like it. I like my man, Batista. <laughs> fucking tool uh all right sadly after we were just and i think i even said something during our premiere when we finally did get it up and running that robocop rogue city although we said it had a september release now has been delayed to november robot cop robocop robot cop nope it's robocop robo detective no it's robo cop how about robo leo it'd be cyborg detective or cyborg leo there's a difference between a robot and a cyborg. Well, what about an android? What if it's a mandroid? <laughs> Shut up. Um, again, we saw the uh, gameplay footage last week. It looked really great. And uh, now we've learned that it will now release on November 2nd 
on next-gen consoles. You can watch the gameplay footage on our Facebook page. We have it available, but if you were looking to get into it next month or this month, sorry. I was watching some videos of the RoboCop movies, dude, after <laughs> I watched that RoboCop 2 one here. Like he fought those Asian people, those Asian robots. And number three with his fucking machine gun hand. And they had messed up faces. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Oh, I've I watched those recently. Well, yeah, you. I came up here and he had the what motorcycle. What was his name? Automo is what the Japanese Atomo called. Or something. Automo, yeah, they, that's what they called their version of RoboCop. And there's like three of them. Yeah, there was three of them. They were rigged to self destruct. <laughs> yeah, you were the, dead, you stupid slag. They got programmed or so hacked. They got they hacked. got hacked by the little girl. And number two had that little kid in it too that got killed. Oh yeah, Hob. Yeah. <laughs> That was his name, Hobbs, or something like that. No, I think you're right, Hobbs. Hobbs. Ubisoft says, is that how you say that? Ubisoft? Ubisoft. <laughs> CM Punk be soft. <laughs> Don't say that! Ubisoft says that they are developing a Blade video game. I'd okay. Be, it might be interesting. I yeah. Wonder if it'd okay. Be like open world, like their other. That's games. what I need to know, right? Is it going to be like a Batman Arkham Knight type situation where you have free open world, or are we talk about a side scroller? What are we talking about here? Yeah. Um, but I'm all about Blade, so as long as it's not like that Midnight Suns game, right? It was a little goofy. It was still kind of cool. <laughs> I was very happy to see this, Christian. Yeah. Red Dead Redemption Three has officially been confirmed by Rockstar's parent company. Which is who? Oh, I was going to say, I thought it was Rockstar. <laughs> That's what I thought. Who's their parent company? Disney. Uh, <laughs> it probably <laughs> is. Okay. Uh, wait. Uh, yeah, it doesn't even say. Okay. Rockstar Games <laughs> said there's going to be a Red Dead Redemption 3. You know, they got the original one on the Switch now. Really? Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. That's cool. The original one wasn't open world, though, was it? I don't know. I never played it. I don't it. think it was open world. I think it was more campaign style. Keeping on video games here, we do have a new Kong game that's coming called Skull Island Rise of Kong. That could be cool. I like those old Rampage games. Um, did oh. you watch the trailer? I did not no. watch the trailer. So I'm not sure what. If you play as Kong or what. Yeah, what the deal is for that. Skull Island, 1835. We got the reel going. That's probably not even going to show any gameplay, is it? <laughs> trying to find some. There, there you go. Uh-oh. It, it looks like, like a smash em up Yeah. I don't know why you're... Whoa. Some of the shit you're fighting. You got to conquer Skull Island. Yeah. Dude. Do you fight Godzilla, though? Probably not. That's my question. Is that the sequel game? I don't think Godzilla ever made it to Skull Think Godzilla Island. will be a DLC? Looks like you just fight a bunch of worms. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of maggots. Rawr. Anyway, um, look for that on October 17th, 2023. If you're a Kong fan, should be pretty fun. I'm excited about this one because this one looks awesome. G.I. Joe is going to get an arcade-style side-scroll brawler game, much like Shredder's Revenge, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Double Dragon. Where you uh, move through the game. I see Duke. I see some Cobra Soldiers. I think I saw Destro somewhere. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, Maybe. usually you think of G.I. Joe with guns, but I can do a beat-em-up. Yeah, beat-em-up game with guns. And you may still have some guns. You, I, I don't know yet. Uh, well, I, and I didn't watch the gameplay trailer. But we're looking at that in in the first quarter of 2024, so sometime before March. And I'm starting to move fast because we're tight on time. Tying it up. Tying it off. I'm very excited and heading over to comic book news. Batman 89 Echoes, which is going to be the sequel book to the Batman 89 series they did, which featured Two-Face and the Joker, is going to introduce the Burton verse, which will include Burton's version of who would be Harley Quinn and who would be the Scarecrow. Um, and again, Max Shrek. This book is a complete take on... Um, the Batman 1989 film starring Michael Keaton. What about number two? Is that one not included in no, the No, that's included. Okay. That happened. Yeah. Right. No, th this assumes Flash didn't happen. Yeah. This is shit after Returns. Oh, uh, okay. Um, like what would have been Batman Forever. Yeah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. 
So that's pretty cool. And in addition to Batman 89 having a sequel series, Christopher Reeve's Superman 78 will have a follow-up series too, putting it against the Soviet Union, and that one is called something curtain. The Metal Curtain. Iron Curtain. No, it's the Metal Curtain. Well, I mean, it was the Iron Curtain. <laughs> no, it's the Metal Curtain. In history. <laughs> Great cover work. It looks good. Those 78 comics are a lot of fun. Um, they, I, hey, they need to build that wall out of Krypton. Sp- <laughs> Kryptonite. <laughs> I knew it was something. <laughs> Not out of the planet. Um, so, again, I'm just very excited for these releases. And uh, Metallo is supposed to be introduced as well. He's going to be the wall, dude. Is he going to be the wall? Metallo wall. I am Metallo wall. Oh, man, what's his name got turned into a wall in Zombies? The Thing. He was a big wall. Or yeah. In, in one of those. In yeah. The, in, the, in the one with Doctor Doom, Secret Wars or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. They did. And then Cyborg became the source wall. Oh, yeah. In DC that one time. People become walls all the time. Yeah, I guess you're right. Um, writer Tom King is teasing Wonder Woman's new villain as Joker-esque. And I guess it's supposed to be her daughter. Huh. Um, Trinity is the name of Wonder Woman, Diana's daughter. And I don't know much about it. I'm going to say, honest. who's the daddy? No clue. Um, Hercules, Hercules. Could be. Uh, but again, she she is now considered a villain. And she's going to be Joker S, dude. <laughs> well, I assume that means that. She's going to be deadly or serious She and crazy? She embodies the exact opposite of what Diana does. I, just, <sighs> I, don't, know. I don't know. It's hard to say. I'm oh, my sure. gosh. All right, Christian, that's the news. Let's head over to our events. We don't have time to get to these today, but we will wrap them up on next week's show. Let's do the it. The Rocky Horror Picture Show is coming to the Paramount Arts Center this October, and they're now looking for auditions. You going to try out? No. You could the be that one guy. Meatloaf? Yeah. So that's the only guy I could be. I could be him too. Yeah, you could. Uh, you could Paramount be players. Bald guy. No, the that butler was, guy. Too thin, man. He's you can be thin. fat. I don't think I can be fat, dude. dude we're in West Virginia. Um, if you're interested, head to ParamountArtCenter dot com forward slash Rocky hyphen horror hyphen show forward slash, and you can audition. They are going to be held September the twelfth at six p.m. And you can do the time warp dance with them. Don't forget this Saturday, September 9th, Barbersville City Park Amphitheater in Barbersville, West Virginia, just down the road, Christian. We're going to have ACW's Finish What You Started featuring ACW's Val Venus, Chance Prophet. Uh, Looks like uh, Matt Cross is in there. Shane Storm is in there. So lots of great names going to be at this show again at the Barbersville Amphitheater in the Barbersville City Park. Um, That should be a fun show. Meet and greet at 6.30. Showtime is 7 to 9. General admission is only $10. Ringside teats run you 15 10 bucks, 15 bucks. Here's a big one that was announced, Christian. Theo Vaughn is coming to Huntington, In Mountain re- Health Arena. The Return of the Rat. I thought it was Charleston. It's Huntington. Okay. No, it's Huntington. Return of the Rat Tour, November 11th, 8 p.m. That's a Saturday. Tickets are now on sale, and they are going fast. Who is so, Theo Vaughn? He is a comedian. He was on Road Rules or Real World once, too. I don't know. So I don't know about all that. I just yeah, know he's dude. a podcast comedian yeah, now, but he is yeah. a very funny guy. And You think so? He tells all those show. stories about growing up with weird people, man? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much like our lives, you know? Return of the Rat. Return of the Rat. That all right. That was song. Did you know that? No. Yeah, dude. Return of the I Rat. I did not. That will do it for this week's edition of the news, unless you have anything else, Christian. I wanted to talk about how Barbie made so much money. Okay. What's going to happen? Are we going to make more movies like that? Like what? I don't know. Toys. There are so many properties out there that you could make (laughs) movies out of that we probably will see a little bit of that. What you're talking about, like the, you're talking about, like a trend. Yeah, starting, a trend because right? it's so successful. Right, it's going to um, spawn the copycats. I mean, Hasbro. I think Mattel is taking note from Hasbro because Hasbro was really the only ones that ever had the balls, yeah, to put their stuff in movies. And Mattel is like, well, wait a minute, we got fucking, you know, Masters of the Universe. We've got Barbie. We've got fucking all this other. I mean. Why are we not doing this? Yeah. So, 
I think that will encourage Mattel to maybe explore some more of their properties. But when you've got like properties that are owned by Warner Brothers or 20th Century, no, they're going to protect those like they always do. Oh. So no, you're not going to see a Thundercats. You're not going to see a some kind of incarnation of you know. I don't know. Man, I kind of want to see a Thundercats movie now. A what? A Thundercats movie. Dude, I've been waiting 40 years for a Thundercats movie. (laughs) And I'm still going to be waiting, probably when I'm dead. So, yes, I I think that some properties that are based off toys or um, some other kind of intellectual basis will be made into films or shows. But as far as which ones, the toy companies will probably explore that. But I wonder if they'll focus on, like, girl toys, dude, like... uh, (laughs) Easy Bake Oven, the movie. How the fuck? What kind of fucking movie is that? <laughs> Give me the plot of the Easy Bake Oven movie, please. There's a magic oven. <laughs> and this girl makes wonderful treats. Oh. God <laughs> damn. There's a lot you could do with an Easy Bake Oven, dude. I mean, you couldn't do that stuff with a creepy crawler oven. Do you remember... A a year or two ago, somebody on Facebook had made posters of game, like board games that could be movies. Oh, yeah. And they did one of the Hungry Hungry Hippos, and it kind of looked like the hippo attack from Congo, except (laughs) it was four of them. God. (laughs) I have to find that post and share it. See, that's a good, that's another good movie you did, Hungry Hungry Hippos. That'd be a good horror movie. I could see yeah. the, the poo guy making that one. <laughs> the poo guy. The honey bear. I mean the, the honey bear. <laughs> the blood and honey. I've been talking about a lot of bears this episode. Oh, dude, what is your obsession? Did you have you, you watch Cocaine Bear before you came over here or what? No, I've been seeing a lot of people get caught in bear traps though. <laughs> What? In Texas Chainsaw, in those recaps, there's usually somebody that runs and gets caught in a bear trap. I don't know that it's a bear trap. Well, have you ever seen an animal caught in it? It's a big thing like this. It's like a saw trap, dude, but it catches a bear's foot. Uh, Have I seen a bear trap in my life? I mean, have you seen a bear caught in a bear trap? No. I know. That's the thing. You never see that. It's weird. You see more huh. people caught in bear traps than actual bears. Well, and bear traps, you know, do, do they not describe the different sizes? Cause you think, yeah. Well, there's traps know. that catch, like, wolves, and there's traps that catch, like, you know. Then they got a, raccoons, and they got to chew their leg off. Yeah, I've heard of that. <laughs> they gnaw it right off, dude. Please follow us at our website, podomatic.com forward slash geekzip podcast. That's P O D O M A T I C dot com forward slash geekzip podcast. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Our show is available every Tuesday morning, 9 a.m. It drops on all podcast servers. And our video, we premiere at 11 a.m. Hopefully, usually. Hopefully. On Tuesdays with me and Christian in the chat talking about the episode as we go so please join us for that as well christian you got anything else no i wanted to say thank everybody for listening even though we waste your time every week here just (laughs) yeah but it's an entertainer entertaining thing i mean we say funny shit occasionally yeah and you get some news too information news stuff you might not have known before yeah Yeah, yeah. i think we're good i I think we're treating the people good for christian this is ryan zip you guys have a great week and we'll see you on the next one thank you for listening to the geek zip podcast listen on itunes spotify podomatic facebook amazon prime follow the geek zip podcast on facebook twitter and instagram Search Geek Zip Podcast.